Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this beautiful day in East Tennessee. I want to thank you for all these KMBA workers, for our industry, and everything that you've pr provided to us. Please be with us tonight as we install our new board. Please be with those that are not with us this evening. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you'll stand up, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Mortgage Bankers Association was very instrumental in creating solutions and allowing people to stay in their homes, purchase new homes, and was very critical to the stabilization of the economy. I um, wanted to highlight a few things that the Mortgage Bankers Association was involved with on a national level, a regional level, and a local level. So nationally, um, three major things. There was li liquidity facilitation, uh, the introduction of the forbearance plans uh, was a lot of negotiation and discussion between key key legislators, key government and political heads. Bankers Association was very instrumental in supporting the consumer and the industry throughout the year uh, on a national level, a regional level, and a local level. So I wanted to highlight some of those key things that that took place. Um, the facilitation of liquidity, that's the forbearance plan that the MBA was very instrumental in proposing and uh, taking action on. Um, a lot of that is, is where the MBA comes in at a national level. They explain the, the circumstances, they explain what could happen um, to the consumer, they explain the guidelines and procedures, and a lot of um, a lot of the legislation that's critical to pass uh, to support keeping homeowners in their homes. So that was that was very critical in, in March and very early on in the year, and uh, supported homeowners throughout the year. Uh, the second thing was the extension of the QM patch. For those that aren't familiar, the QM patch is the ability to repay. Uh, that's the 43 percent debt to income ratio, and that was plan to expire that's been continued um, indefinitely so uh, Fannie and Freddie get a little bit of relief from that they're the ones that are allowed to go beyond the 43 percent DTI and so the, the extension of that plan uh, it was critical and instrumental in stabilization and home ownership uh, the third thing is the adverse market fee so the half point fee that loan originators remember um, that was about to be implemented around August, September, that was delayed. Uh, therefore, uh, you know, where, where the NBA came into play on that was 23,000 members sent 85,000 messages uh, to legislators on our behalf and on the consumer's behalf to delay the implementation of that fee, therefore saving $1,500 for you know, our customers and consumers uh, and, and allowing the economy to continue to grow at the time. So on a regional level, uh, the TNMBA uh, had a, it continued with their mission, some of their objectives. They were able to provide $10,000 in scholarships um, for uh, college attendees that were based on current Tennessee residents um, in, a, in four year accredited or a master's program and a direction related to the financial industry. So um, they were able to continue that. And the Futures Leader, Future Leaders Program, they were able to take seven um, participants in the Future Leaders Program, take them through a lot of different levels of education and comprehension of mortgage banking and graduate them. We'll continue to do that in 2021. At a local level, uh, we, we introduced, um, and, and continued on with a lot of our plans. So uh, January and February are very, very busy. We had our awards banquet. We were able to honor over 80 uh, mortgage lenders in the Knoxville market with their $1.7 billion in production. Um, we, were, we participated um, and collaborated with the NAREP 
uh, local chapter for their inaugural event kickoff um, as they as they expanded into Knoxville. Uh, we also we had a dedication for Habitat for Humanity, so we were there for the the, the build, the dedication, and um, you know, we're a key participant in that, and we're very honored to be part of that. Um, let's see. We also we did Day on the Hill, Day on the Hill. Um, to meet with our legislators and push a lot of our proposals. Um, again, 2020 was very, um, very necessary for the NBA to be a keen, keen involvement and um, contribution. So, um, let's see. We also so then March hit, and that's when a lot of the shutdown happened. So. What the KNBA had to do was basically take a step back and figure out what our mission was gonna be. And, and um, we decided to continue to adhere to a couple key principles that we had. Um, philanthropy is, is one of our, our major missions. So we did uh, continue with Habitat. We raised money through our golf outing. We raised $15,000 to be um, participants in that. We also enacted um, through the Mortgage Action Alliance, the MA campaign, where we were able to um, create the largest number of participants and, and registrations for that to promote our um, all the necessary things during the pandemic that, that keep sustainable housing alive. Um, and then we did the 10-pack fundraising drive where we raised another $15,000 uh, to lead the, the local Tennessee chapters in that, and uh, membership. So we also did a membership campaign, and uh, of the five local chapters, and the Knoxville chapter was successful in, in uh, creating the most new members. Um, let's see, we, what else did we do? We did the continuing education, so uh, part of our, our commitment to our membership is education. So we were able to conduct two continuing education classes in November and December uh, for our membership. Uh, so more philanthropy, we did a, a raise a thousand dollars for Toys for Tots for the Salvation Army and we're able to contribute to them in December. Um, and that that's about it. We had uh, we were again voted uh, chapter of the year for Tennessee, and <laughs> Amy McElveen was um, member of the year. So individually, Amy was um, you know, very instrumental in, in the fundraising activities that were necessary to continue the mortgage bankers um, in, in the recognition that we needed, along with the, the politicians and legislators. So. Um, hopefully 2021 brings along some stabilization. I know that the, uh, the, the new strategy with um, President Biden and the new administration is going to be focused around sustainable and affordable home ownership. So we will be um, supporting that and, and educating our members on how we can help and in encouraging them to participate in some of the the home buyer programs, the down payment assistance programs, things like that. So I wanted to take a minute and thank the KBA, KMBA board and uh, all the things we accomplished in such a difficult year. Um, to meet every month on virtual meetings and um, be able to still carry on our, our mission and uh, our vision for the year and accomplish all the goals that we set out for it. So, um, with that said, uh, I'm going to introduce Carly Bond, president of the Tennessee Mortgage Bankers Association, and let her say a few words. I am thrilled to be here to kick off 2021. Uh, I'm thrilled to be a part of this board. For the record, I did ask JR to serve another year. <laughs> One of the horrible casualties of COVID was that KNBA did not get a full year of JR as president. So, um, but one of the things that this board has done so well is cohesively, we've been an amazing group. And, um, you know, I, I hate 
that my name has been attached with some victories that were group victories. Um, so I, I'm just, I'm thrilled that the band is together for another year. And to the new people, welcome. We have a lot of fun. We do a lot of great work, but we do have a lot of fun. So, um, for those that don't know me, my name is Amy McElveen. Uh, I've been in the mortgage business in Knoxville for about 24 years. Uh, about 10 years ago, uh, 11 years ago, Lacey Husk approached me and asked me to come to a KMBA meeting and I told her, I'm too busy. Why do I want to network with other mortgage professionals? Um, you know, I, it's just, it's all one company. I have every excuse to not be a part of it. Uh, five years ago, Chris Burleson asked me to come to a meeting and I used those same exact excuses. Um, Y'all know that I have two bosses in my life that I dearly love and respect. Um, five years ago, Retta Gardner asked me to get involved with KMBA and again, I told her I was too busy, I didn't have time, but that I would come to a meeting or two, and then a few years later, Jeff Devereaux told me it was not optional that I would get involved. So, fast forward a few years later, here I stand before you, and I have to say, it's probably one of the best decisions that I've ever made, because all of those reasons that I had, you know, I was too busy, and what's in it for me, why do I want to spend my lunch hour with mortgage professionals and learning about mortgage things when you know I, I was busy but I can honestly look across the screen and say that you guys have become my closest friends and the people that I my first choice to spend a lunch break with and I, I wish that everyone had the experience that I've had in mortgage bankers. I had no idea I would become so weirdly passionate about it. So, for 2021, um, here are the things that we're going to focus on. Um, diversity and inclusion. As an association and an industry, we must make sure that our membership and our industry reflects the diversity in our community. And yeah, that's that part up. I have, that's the only piece that I have written well. Um, <laughs> the rest of those sentences. Um, as an association and an industry, we must make sure our membership reflects the diversity of the workplace and the community we serve. Diversity and inclusion are much, much more than just race and gender. It is incumbent upon us to make sure everyone feels not only included, but valued for their differing opinions and their contributions. TNMBA has implemented a task force to help us at the local chapter level examine where we are and help us be more intentional about where we want to be. We will, on our chapter level, be working to establish and strengthen relationships with amazing organizations like NARAP, Knoxville Urban League, and Knoxville Park. In inclusion and diversity must be more than a policy. It must be our commitment to creating a culture that invites and celebrates everyone's involvement. Number two, exclusivity. I know I just said, Inclusion, <laughs> but, but, this is not the opposite. This is just, JR did an amazing job last year standing in front of the entire membership at our award ceremony saying we need to celebrate our affiliates and we need to do business with our affiliates. In 2020, our affiliates stepped up. Our lar largest donors, our sponsors, were our affiliates. They stepped up when some of our lender members were. So, we need to not just say 
do business with affiliates, we need to make sure it is our policy. We need to thank the people who want to be a part of our organization. We need to spend our dollars with them. We need to thank them at every meeting. They have a lot of choices and a lot of places that they can spend their money, and they are here with us. So thank you to our affiliate members who are going to serve on the board. We thank you. Thank you to the families who sponsored our golf tournament. It was, it, I, I hope it was dollars well spent for you guys. But we thank you. We celebrate you. We are thrilled that you are a part of us. But you know, starting now, we need to make sure that the people who are a part of us are the places that we are spending our dollars. Here. Advocacy. I know that we all have political fatigue. So I ask us as we go out into the communities that we somehow reframe the political action committee and we think of it as advocacy. Advocacy for our livelihood, our profession, our pocketbooks, if nothing else. You know, this is a year where we have a new administration, new head of the CFPB. You know, I'm not sure, this is not a political statement, but is this the year that you want to stand on the sidelines and, and let everyone else be in control? So, what can you do as a company, as a small company, as a large company, as an individual? You can write a check. That really, we're going to come ask it for. <laughs> um, so, the fourth thing is tool sharpening. Literally said tool sharpening. Um, and this is education and improvement. I mean, JR already mentioned all of the wonder, wonderful things that um, Tennessee Mortgage Bankers is doing with their scholarships, which is a wonderful opportunity. Um, we'd love to see winners, high school students from our area win those. Um, there's continuing education, which is wonderful, um, but it's not just education. You know, I think y'all have, y'all have heard me say it a lot, and I'll clean it up for the video, but I think 2020 has made a lot of us overconfident. Uh, you know, months and months of phone ringing has made us feel invincible, uh, and that the party can never end, right? But last week was kind of like that record scratch, you know, when you're like, wait a second, my good looks and charm is not going to be enough to sustain us if we don't have low rates, right? So, um, as an association, we want to bring content to everyone that helps us all sharpen our tools and, and be better loan officers um, and better mortgage professionals. Interestingly enough, our most popular um, speakers have been those who have spoken to us about work-life balance, goal setting, things that aren't necessarily mortgage related, but those are the things that we all, you know, we, we all want and need to make us better. Mortgage profess professionals, husbands, wives, parents, all of those things. So giving, now we're getting to where these are the things that I love. We've all heard Teddy Roosevelt's quote, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Here's one thing that we got over the Quickens and the Amazons in the world, is that every dollar that we raise in as an association, every activity that we do benefits our community right here. So, this is the year that we examine. We've long had a partnership with Habitat, and we want to continue that partnership. We just completed our second home, and we're thrilled with that partnership. But are there other organizations that we need to spend time and money with? And we'll look at that in 2021. Um, so, number six. <laughs> This is the last one, I promise. How many numbers do we have? 37. <laughs> <laughs> Number six. This is an unofficial goal of mine. Participation, celebration, and fun. 
sin. I think it's a board. It is important <coughs> upon us to make sure that we are giving value to our association and its members so that we are more than a one stop on award night when people come up, get their award, and we don't hear from them again until the following year. We've got to figure out a way to bring value and make people want to be a part of everything that we do. We have so much fun and we do so much good. So how do we get everyone to participate? So that we'll examine. I know this is a bit of a tough year to take on that task, but what do we do to get people more involved? Um, celebration, the award ceremony. I know that this is what everybody has been asking us on the board is, is there going to be a ceremony in 2021? And you betcha there is. We just gotta figure out what it's gonna look like. Um, from the people that we've spoken to so far, everyone seems to be willing to do an event that has some outside component. Uh, we're exploring that. Whether that's World Spare Park, food trucks, we don't know, but we are taking that on. Um, and we welcome people's opinions and input. But we do want to celebrate the 197,322 people who will be eligible for an award this year. <laughs> Pause, we'll let that be sad. Um, we do want to celebrate everyone's production. Um, everyone worked hard for this. You know, I, I think that it's unfortunate that the year of so many people's career comes in a year that we're struggling to figure out how to celebrate that, but rest assured we will celebrate that. Uh, we are going to start by running an ad in the paper uh, for the lender members who have rejoined and given us their, their numbers. We will be featuring every company and loan officer in the newspaper on our social media. What better ways to, to shout from the rooftop about our amazing work that we've done and uh, show your referral partners and, and you know, your spouses and family what you've been doing all the time when you were engaging with them. Um, so that will come out. We'll have information on that. The deadline is fast approaching because we do want to feature everyone in March. Um, right now it looks like our gala will be potentially May, June, July. We're gonna have other wonderful events. Our golf tournament will be back again this year. We're gonna do a glow in the dark golf event. Uh, we're gonna kind of capitalize on some of the outdoor events that we can. Um, you know, we wanna, we wanna have fun. We wanna celebrate and this is you know, this is, this is an association of people who know, who get you, who understand how hard you're working and uh, working seven days a week, and, and, and we get that. Um, so I, I'm excited about this year, whatever it may look like. Great River is on for August. We hope to have a record number of attendees from Knoxville. Um, you know, I, I think, I think it's going to be an amazing year. And I think the other chapters got their, uh, they got their work cut out for us. We're going to, going to make it three times, three time winners of chapter of the year. So I'm thrilled to take over. Donna and JR have left enormous shoes for me to fill. I hope that I do have the really amazing job that you both have done. Um, Thank you for the opportunity. Hello, everybody. We will now begin the installation of the Knoxville Mortgage Bankers Association. President Amy McElveen with the Mortgage Boutique, a division of First Community Mortgage. Vice President Kim Carmen with People's Home Equity. Treasurer Lindsay Whitworth with MIG. Secretary Edna Price with Hometown Lenders. Past President J.R. Huber, MIG. Lender Director Donna Bowling with MIG. 
Lender Director Adam Shelton with Sierra Pacific, Lender Director Darren Osborne with MIG, Affiliate Director Lisa Lanick with MGIC, Affiliate Director Susan Bentley with Bentley and Associates Inspections, Affiliate Director Val Privet with Beacon Insurance Advisors. If you were to go to the National MBA Convention and see the installation of board members there, or if you were to attend the Great Rivers Conference and see the members, the installation of board members there, you would hear the same words that you are about to hear now. The reason we use the same words is to affirm that we are stronger as one voice, one vision, and one resource. You stand on the threshold of a new leadership year for the Knoxville Mortgage Bankers Association. You have been elected by your fellow members to help guide the organization to new levels of excellence and service. This vote of confidence in your ability and your dedication is also a vote of thanks, gratitude for your willingness to commit great amounts of your time and energy for the betterment of our profession and industry. Leadership is not an easy task. It often places demands on you that will take you away from your own interest, your business, and your family. Just as you will be generous with your time, so too will the members who have elected you. Through their participation, they will support you in ways that you need to be effective. You will provide the voice to your profession. You will act for the good of all the members and the public that we serve. With the prestige of office comes the responsibility to represent all interests of the membership. And if if you are prepared to accept these duties, please raise your right hand. Do you sincerely promise that you will administer your office in the Knoxville Mortgage Bankers Association to the best of your abilities and judgment, that you will act in conformity with the organization's bylaws, that you will adhere to and enforce the code of standards, that your decisions and actions will be governed by the principle of honesty and justice, and that you will safeguard the best interest of the members and the public we serve. If you do, please answer, I will. I will. You may lower your right hand. By the virtue of authority conferred upon me as president of the Mortgage Bankers Association, I hereby declare you to be duly and officially installed and inaugurated as officers and members of the board of directors of the Knoxville Mortgage Bankers Association. We congratulate you on this milestone in your career, and we welcome you to your year with your leadership ahead. Woo!